Bikini Bottom is filled with heroes, villains, and everyone in between. So today, we're ranking every SpongeBob SquarePants character from good to evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble character and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good. And there are plenty of friendly faces in Bikini Bottom, but we're giving our gold medal of good to Grandma Squarepants. The best grandma in the world, Grandma. Grandma. When it comes to morals, she's as sweet as a batch of her freshly baked cookies. You make the best cookies in the deep blue sea. Oh, yeah. She thrives on showing love to her grandson, Spongebob. And when Patrick comes to visit, she babies him just the same way. So the line of kindness isn't just drawn at family. While she does respect Spongebob's wishes to be treated as an adult, she's also willing to dote on him again when he decides he doesn't actually want to grow up. Add on the fact that there is absolutely nothing bad we can say about her, and you have the perfect pick for the gold medal of good. The silver medal of good is thankfully far from a certain four-letter word starting with E. It's good old Mermaid Man, of course. As one half of Bikini Bottom's most beloved crime-fighting duo, Mermaid Man is a kind and vigilant hero. Sure, he is a little bit senile in his old age, to say the least. And the worst part is, I can't remember why I started crying. <laughs> but at the annoyance, I mean encouragement, of SpongeBob and Patrick, he and Barnacle Boy came out of retirement to continue protecting Bikini Bottom from evil. There's nothing outright bad to say about Mermaid Man, but he does occasionally share Barnacle Boy's annoyance with SpongeBob and Patrick, being willing to ditch him in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2. But we can't dock him any points, as he's still an incredibly kind and heroic figure for the town. And we can understand how SpongeBob and Patrick can get on someone's nerves. But let's head over to the big screen to talk about Mindy, who takes the bronze medal of good. A supporting character whose only prominent appearance is in the original SpongeBob SquarePants movie, fans will remember her as King Neptune's kind-hearted daughter. While she does have a deceptive side, shown by her tricking SpongeBob and Patrick into thinking she had mermaid magic that would turn them into men. You just gotta believe! It's only brought out when necessary for the good of the people. From generously defying her father's order to throw the royal crown polisher into the dungeon for 40 years, to interceding on SpongeBob's behalf so he could save Mr. Krabs, Mindy uses her intelligence and resources to grow into a kind soul who's definitely shaping up to be a heroic and proper ruler of the sea. Despite having less screen time than most of the entries on our list, she made enough of an impact to get an honorable placement. But real quick, I want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Aura. I'm sure you've heard that data brokers are continuously selling all of our information to scammers, spammers, and all sorts of nefarious people who want to target you. Your full name, phone number, email, home address, medical records, relatives, and all sorts of other sensitive information, it's all out there. And it's actually really scary. And that's why I use Aura, which is an amazing service that shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests on my behalf. This not only reduces spam, but it also helps protect against hackers who can use this information to gain access to social media accounts or even bank accounts. And I'm not exaggerating. A couple of years ago, we actually almost had a hacker get into this YouTube channel by compromising one of our email addresses. And had they been successful, they could have nuked this channel. It was actually a really stressful time dealing with that back then, and it completely opened my eyes to how important it is to clean up your data online. AT&T revealed that over 72 2 million customer records of both existing and former customers were released onto the dark web. They recommended those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Aura does all this, and you don't have to download multiple apps just because of one company's carelessness. If my information was compromised in the AT&T breach, for instance, I wouldn't worry, because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. Privacy is so important, so go to Aura.com forward slash Wicked Binge and get started with a free two-week trial. Link in the description. Thank you, Aura, for sponsoring us today and keeping our data safe. Now, let's get back to the video. But let's talk about the first of many recurring background fish, Scooter. He's that light purple fish who's experienced high tide, laughed at the ripping of pants, and can find the coin slot on any seahorse. Scooter is a chill guy who's always friendly with his fellow bikini bottom dudes and dudettes. Thanks, kid. That was awesome! 
May he experience high tide to the maximum for all of his days. He's genuinely one of those characters who just exists to lift the spirits of everyone around him. Kind of like Bruce from Family Guy. Mm. Another milkshake, please. It may be surprising that we're heading to the chum bucket so early, but the next spot has to go to Spot. When even a tyrannical, albeit tiny, evil genius can't resist how adorable you are, you just know you're the closest thing to a pure soul this town has ever seen. Spot doesn't appear all too often, but his debut in the season 9 episode Plankton's Pet made him a welcome addition to the supporting cast. He's an adorable character who's ever loyal to Plankton. While this does mean he's helping him steal the formula by default, he's really just a good boy in general. He saves SpongeBob and Plankton from a gang of angry pets attacking them for instance, showing that his kindness isn't limited to his owner. And as a side note, he's even in the newest SpongeBob video game, The Cosmic Shake, as a collectible bonus item. But he's more than a collectible item to us, he's a collectible friend. Though when it comes to Bikini Bottom pets, you just can't beat Gary the Stamp. Who doesn't love old Gare Bear? Greetings and salutations, grouchy man. Gary's just a house snail trying to live his best life. He enjoys the finer things in undersea life, from reading books to tying shoes to helping out around the town. In Fungus Among Us, Gary is actually the key to curing the fungus attacking Bikini Bottom, and that's far from the only time he's a major help. Gary loves SpongeBob dearly and is always there to support him when needed. This includes rescuing him from Puffy Fluffy and a pal for Gary, even after SpongeBob was the absolute worst to him in that episode. Gary! Gary! Unlock this door immediately! Gary! Gary! <laughs> As for why we don't rank him higher, well, Gary can get into a bit of mischief. He might let you blow yourself up before he's willing to take a bath. And in The Bully, he pulls out a camera when SpongeBob is about to get beaten up by Flats. But everyone does have a dark side, and we can love Gary and his all the same. We will give Gary the gluttony medal, though. In Whatever Happened to SpongeBob, he ate a year's worth of food in just one day. But let's pay a visit to Old Man Jenkins. He may have one of the most inconsistent designs in the entire series, but one thing consistent about Old Man Jenkins is his generous, kind nature. When Mr. Krabs was a young boy whose folks couldn't afford clothes for him, Jenkins gave them help by letting them stitch some rags together to use clothes. He can admittedly be a bit unstable at times, but he's also always out to protect Bikini Bottom citizens from the dangers of city folk and their flying machines. Yeah, nothing good would come from shitty folk and their flying machines. But let's give a quick mention to SpongeBob's parents, Harold and Margaret Squarepants. While they're far from major characters, we've seen enough of this pair to conclude that they're all around good people. They're always supportive of SpongeBob, from gladly taking him in when his house is eaten by nematodes, to celebrating him finally getting his driver's license. Oh no, this doesn't look like a family restaurant. Oh, well, what do you think, baby? Would you like to eat here? They also care deeply for each other, though. For one example, the episode New Digs sees Mr. Krabs accidentally walk in on Margaret in the shower, leading to a beatdown from Harold. And speaking of beatdowns, it's time to talk about Mermaid Man's young ward, Barnacle Boy. Barnacle Boy is a lot more abrasive than his more senile partner in crime stopping. He's often the voice of reason when Mermaid Man is a little too generous towards their spongy superfan. And on one occasion, he even becomes an outright villain due to Mermaid Man refusing to let him order an adult-sized Krabby Patty. A villain who is evil. Still, by the end of the day, Barnacle Boy does care for his fans and the deep blue sea in general, doing just as much as Mermaid Man to protect it from the horrors of villains like the Atomic Flounder, Man Ray, and the dreaded Dirty Bubble. The boy needs his vitamins. Here you go, son. <laughs> if Mermaid Man is the heart and soul of the duo, Barnacle Boy is likely the brains. And that's every bit as important, even if he is a little more brash than his partner. All right, y'all, it's time to talk about Sandy Cheeks. The strongest critter in Bikini Bottom, this Texan squirrel is a kind-hearted citizen who acts as SpongeBob and Patrick's mediator and a sort of surrogate big sister figure. Sandy will do absolutely anything to protect her friends and won't hesitate to beat the tar out of anyone who hurts or even endangers them, like the Texas-style whooping she gave Mr. Krabs in Shopping List. 
That said, Sandy's passion doubles as her greatest strength and weakness. She can be overly competitive sometimes, leading to the injury and exhaustion of everyone else around her, usually SpongeBob. <laughs> She also won't hesitate to attack if you don't say nothing bad about Texas. What am I now? Uh, stupid? No, I'm Texas! What's the difference? But despite her weaknesses, Sandy is overall one of the most reliably friendly faces in Bikini Bottom, as well as a pretty consistent force of good. And from one rough and tough beachgoer to the next, we have Larry the Lobster the Giga Chad of the Pacific Ocean. Larry is a nice subversion of the usual show off the main character is jealous of trope. Rather than being obnoxious, Larry is generally a very kind and caring person. He takes his role as lifeguard seriously, using his strength to protect the beachgoers at all costs. Well, will you look at that? And properly trains SpongeBob and Patrick to swim when he finds out they weren't able to. In later seasons, he's the owner of Larry's Gym, where he helps Bikini Bottom get in shape, even letting them use it for free on the first day. The reason he loses a few points is that his show-off attitude can sometimes venture into jerk territory. I was just picking up some dietary supplements here at the supermarket. I've been working on my chest and buns. And he can even be pretty mean sometimes, from calling SpongeBob and Patrick pathetic in A Life in a Day. Well, you gotta take risks. Live on the edge. To telling his own parents they're too old and unsightly to be on the beach. Not quite enough to call his entire character into question, but certainly enough to knock an otherwise pleasant guy down a couple spots. But our next entry is every bit as cool as Larry. And if he's not, let us be struck by a flying ice cream truck. And, and live! SpongeBob SquarePants is soaking up the glory in our next spot. Now, what can we say about SpongeBob that hasn't been said many, many times already? He's the eternal optimist of Bikini Bottom, courageously nice to everyone around him regardless of whether or not he benefits or gets any kindness in return. He regularly helps everyone around him, sometimes even to his own detriment. This does often result in him being taken advantage of, even being used for land development on one occasion. You used me. Haven't you figured it out, SpongeBob? But his generosity and extremely forgiving nature are still worth praising. But why does he fall so low in the good section? Well, while SpongeBob is like 95% well intentioned, there is still that 5% of the time where his ego can get in the way. <sighs> What weenies? <laughs> Would you care for another diet cola with a lemon twist, weenie? In the episode Breath of Fresh Squidward, he starts to be mean to Squidward out of jealousy once he becomes the favorite down at the Krusty Krab rather than SpongeBob himself. SpongeBob's gullible nature also leads to a lot of trouble for those around him, even though he is being well-intentioned. And while he doesn't reach Peter Griffin levels of reckless ignorance, SpongeBob has his unfavorable moments that keep him from ranking any higher. And stop. Don't worry, Captain, we'll buff out those scratches. There's also the occasional stalking tendencies he shows, like when he was able to recreate Squidward's house down to the last detail in Squid's visit. But at the end of the day, he's still a great friend to have. It's no wonder why he has so many fans, like Patchy the Pirate, for one of many examples. Fans are divided on whether Patchy enhances or ruins the specials he's in. But whether you love Patchy or you're wrong, there's little doubt that this admittedly man-childish pirate is a cool guy. He's the leader of the SpongeBob SquarePants fan club, making sure the show goes on no matter what. And that's not to mention the absolutely sick parties he throws, or the cookie dough he makes for his child audience. He loses some points for a short temper, wrecking his entire house when SpongeBob's last episode was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles. We don't blame him too much, but still, it might be good to keep an eye on him. Party! Party! Just know that even if he's a bit of a man-child at times, Patchy is a nice guy. Oh, and on the topic of above-the-water humans, we've got to mention David Hasselhoff real quick. Larry isn't the only lifeguard you can count on, after all. In the SpongeBob movie, Hasselhoff showed up to act as a taxi to Bikini Bottom for SpongeBob and Patrick making sure they'd get the crown, save the town, and Mr. Krabs in time. Go, Hasselhoff! The 
Next stop, Bikini Bottom! So, you did good, Hasselhoff, but let's round out the good section with a quick mention of Harold. One of the most frequent and recognizable fish in the series, Harold is a blue shark-like fish who's known for often losing his temper. But while he is a bit abrasive, he's also shown to have a decent moral code. Like when he protected SpongeBob from the old man he thought was gonna kick his butt. So, you like kicking butts, do ya? Well, we'll show you, old man! There he is! Misguided? Sure. Short-tempered? Absolutely. But a bad guy? Not even close. And with that said, we start treading some rough waters. This is the gray area. Let's kick things off here with a one-time character, Stanley S. Squarepants. Here's the question. Is being the absolute unluckiest creature in the deep blue sea a sin, or is it just plain misfortune? The answer? We don't know. Stanley's a nice enough guy, sure, but his tendency to break literally everything he touches makes him a source of trouble for everyone around him. In any other series, it would be an anime villain origin story in the making. But in SpongeBob, it's just this one guy who showed up once, screwed up some things, and nobody knows where he is today. Hopefully he found his place though, and hopefully he paid for the Chum Bucket's repairs. Sorry, boss. Perch Perkins here, reporting to you live from the next spot. Perch Perkins is pretty much the most just there character in the series. He's an impartial news reporter who reports news. Whether it's acknowledging the dangers of mad snail disease or finding out what exactly inspired the Krusty Krab 2's inception. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money! Perch is there for you when you need news, but not much else. Now we get to our next main character, SpongeBob's five-pointed pink pal, Patrick Starr. And honestly, it breaks our hearts to have to put the big guy so low. Patrick can be an amazing friend, acting as SpongeBob's most loyal and reliable companion, aside from maybe Sandy or Gary. He also helps SpongeBob in many of his good deeds and seems to also take pleasure in them. That said, Patrick can also be very reckless, selfish, and sometimes an outright jerk. Sure about this. You know, I... Maybe it's the walls. You could honestly make a case for him being the most inconsistent character in the entire show, morally speaking. In one episode, he'll be the most sweet and reasonable guy in town, and in another, he's forcing Squidward to ink so he can make other citizens drink it, which sounds disgusting. So yeah, all things considered, this is a generous placement. Though in Patrick's defense, he is a really friendly guy. For every time he causes trouble in an episode, there's another where he's more than willing to clean up his messes, or even someone else's. And many of his worst deeds are more from stupidity rather than malice. Is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Patrick. Which easily earns him the Darwin Medal and a bit more merciful of a placement on our list. Gee, Patrick, I didn't know you spoke bird. No, that's Italian, SpongeBob. Next, let's talk about Pearl Krabs, Mr. Krabs' whale daughter. Don't, uh, don't question it. Just know that Pearl is your stereotypical teenage girl. She's selfish, she wants nothing more than to be popular, likes to go to the mall, and loves money. That's fair, sure, but it's not earning her a Nobel Peace Prize either. Oh no! My backpack! This is the worst thing that could ever happen! That said, we're still gonna give her a modest placement for the fact that she doesn't particularly do anything that bad in the series. In fact, she can be compassionate, comforting SpongeBob when he thinks he's ruined her prom and dancing with him anyway. She's superficial and kind of annoying at worst, and genuinely nice at times. Next up, we're not pulling your leg! Fred is finally here. His character is basically that gag. But that's not all there is to him. He'll burst into song if he eats a Krabby Patty good enough to justify it, or to declare his love for a nurse. Which, yeah, that's why he's in the gray. Rather than asking this woman out like a normal human being, Fred repeatedly and intentionally breaks his own leg, just so he can be hospitalized and see her again. Like, come on guy, other people need medical attention. And how do you even afford that? He definitely earns the lust medal though, just for going that far to maybe ask out a girl. Also worth mentioning is resident chocoholic Tom. 
You probably know him best as the crazy chocolate guy from Chocolate with Nuts. And if not for that, maybe the guy who literally grappled SpongeBob by the dimples out of fear for how he'd ruin his drink. He also rallied the citizens of Bikini Bottom against Bubble Buddy. Tom can be a nice guy on the whole, but if you tick him off, things are gonna get pretty unpleasant. And speaking of unpleasant, it's finally time to take a trip to the center of Conch Street to talk about Squidward Q tentacles. Squidward! Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. In a nutshell, Squidward is the anti-SpongeBob. Where SpongeBob is eternally optimistic, Squidward is eternally pessimistic. Where SpongeBob is childlike and jovial, Squidward is mature and resigned. This can make Squidward appear to be a mean guy, especially to a child's eye, but as time goes on, it's easier to see that Squidward is less of a jerk and more of an exhausted, unfulfilled adult. Because I'm all out of money! That said, he is still also kind of a jerk. He plays cruel pranks on SpongeBob and Patrick quite often, taking advantage of their naivete to get his way, or just for his own enjoyment. <laughs> But for every time Squidward is noticeably mean, there's another time where he shows his true caring nature. In Fools in April, he plays a horribly mean prank on SpongeBob, but later apologizes to him and admits that he likes having him around. He's willing to stick up for SpongeBob when push comes to shove and even makes up for his mean spiritedness on Christmas by becoming Santa for SpongeBob in the hole of Bikini Bottom. But while Squidward is far from a bad guy, he isn't a saint either. So a spot near the middle of the list is perfect for him. Side note, we have to give him the pride medal because his superiority complex and obsession with making art and his image more than earn it. Everybody's an idiot except for me. Well, it's true. From one exhausted adult figurehead to another, next up is Mrs. Puff. Puff has a lot of good qualities. She's incredibly patient, given how caring she is with SpongeBob, despite how much trouble he causes her on a regular basis. Oh, SpongeBob! Against her better judgment, she lets SpongeBob wear the hall monitor uniform so he won't be sad. But as the series goes on, Mrs. Puff's unstable mental state becomes more clear. We find out that she has a past of boat jacking, has relocated and changed her name at least once. And most egregiously, in the episode Demolition Doofus, she formulates a plan to literally kill SpongeBob. <laughs> it's hard not to sympathize with Mrs. Puff, but her checkered past and criminal record in the present makes her an easy choice for the gray area. Next is local panty raid victim Mama Krabs. Mama Krabs is far from the worst parental figure you could ask for, but she isn't anywhere near perfect either. She forces SpongeBob Patrick and Mr. Krabs to paint her house as punishment for cursing. And if you're going to talk like sailors, then you're going to work like sailors. Which seems kind of extreme for three grown men. And also has no issue with Plankton's robot terrorizing Bikini Bottom once he makes her a nice statue. And keeping up the trend of relatives, next is Sam Starr, Patrick's older sister. She only appears in the episode Big Sister Sam, and given her absence in Patrick's family-oriented spin-off show, it's worth wondering if this is another case of Patrick forgetting someone isn't actually related to him. In any case, Sam is basically all of Patrick's worst traits rolled up into one. She has an extremely short temper, and will destroy entire houses if you tick her off even a little bit. Sister Sam, put on mean face. The only thing keeping her from the bottom section is that she does sincerely care about Patrick and protecting him, so hopefully the two keep in touch. After all, someone's gotta protect Patrick from the horrors of Glovey Glove. If you've ever wondered why Patrick is so terrified of this big, perpetually smiling glove, don't worry, the new video game Cosmic Shake answers it quite nicely, or at least offers one possibility. While Glovey Glove loves his theme park and wants his guests to have a great time, he's also not above kidnapping Patrick to force him into best friendship forever. So this guy's a mystery, and the biggest question of all, is that a costume, or is he just like that? In any case, next up we're heading to King Neptune's castle. 
He has one of the worst rap sheets so far. From frequent abuse of power to literally locking his teenage son up on a desert island because he didn't want to be a god, Nepi is far from a model citizen, much less a model deity. He's also one of the main antagonists of the first Spongebob movie, freezing Mr. Krabs after Plankton frames him for stealing his royal crown. As for what keeps him from falling any lower, well, Neptune does actually show remorse for the worst of his misdeeds. And by the end of the movie, he actually does reform his ways and apologizes to Krabs for falsely freezing him. Here's hoping the sea will have a much more kind and compassionate ruler from this day onward. And call it blasphemy if you want to, but we're going to close out the gray area with Mr. Krabs. And I know, I know, pretty much everyone on the internet seems to agree by this point that Mr. Krabs is one of the most evil citizens in Bikini Bottom. And some even debate whether or not he's more evil than Plankton. But call us devil's advocates, if you will. Mr. Krabs has done a lot more good than he's given credit for. Let's start with the bad. Clean drink. Clean light bulbs. He's incredibly greedy, self-centered, and reckless. Mr. Krabs, what are you doing out here? Oh, you know, unwinding, enjoying the free parking. He puts very little effort into birthdays and other treats for his daughter, Pearl, despite being more than well off. He charges his employees for breathing and even sold SpongeBob's soul for 62 cents. So we obviously have to give him the greed medal. But for all those bad deeds, there are some good ones that get less credit. For example, in Hookie, he warns the whole of Bikini Bottom about the hooks, and in Mr. Krabs takes a vacation. He saves the whole tourist group from a pair of burglars. When his greed goes too far, he's actually pretty remorseful most of the time. In the aforementioned Soul Selling debacle, he instantly regrets his actions and begs to have SpongeBob back. What have I done? Krabs is a tightwad and has done some truly horrific things in his life, but he still has a conscience and sincerely cares for SpongeBob, Pearl, and to a much lesser extent, even Squidward. If you still don't want to accept his placement in the gray area, just go listen to This Grill Is Not A Home real quick. And once you're done crying, come back. Because we're now in our last category. These characters are the bad and the evil. Starting out this section with probably the most surprising entry, Bubble Buddy. It might be a bit of a shock to see him this low, but hear us out. At the end of his titular debut episode, Bubble Buddy reveals that he is, in fact, sentient. I'll see you later, SpongeBob. Things are getting a little weird around here. That means that he used counterfeit money to get a ton of free food from a restaurant, left beachgoers waiting in line for the restroom for two hours, deliberately ruined what was effectively an autographic handshake from Pearl's favorite surfer, and let Scooter literally die while he was being buried alive. Don't you stand there, dude! The tide's coming in! Oh! On top of that, he put SpongeBob on the spot to babysit his son later on, and also used his unaccompanied minor son as an envelope, basically endangering his life. Granted, it turns out he could be revived, being that he's made of soap. But still, this guy's more of a menace than he's given credit for. Next up is Patchy's partner in crime, Potty the Parrot. Sure, Patchy is a bit of a man-child, but if nothing else, he doesn't treat Potty in the absolute horrid ways Potty treats him. Even without counting Potty's constant verbal abuse towards Patchy, Potty assaults him on multiple occasions, from giving him a flute made of dynamite to shooting him out of a cannon multiple times. Yeah, they usually make up by the end, but by and large, Potty is just kind of a jerk. But not quite as much of a jerk as Squilliam Fancyson. Out of all the villains in this category, Squilliam is probably the least, quote, villainous. At least in the traditional sense. He's not a criminal, nor is he trying to take over the world or anything like that. But he does have one particularly egregious sin under his belt. He is a massive jerk. As mean as Squidward can be. On your lunch break, eh, Squiddy? At least he doesn't devote his whole life to rubbing his success in Squidward's face. I'm not sure what went on between these two back in Band class, but nothing justifies just how cruel Squilliam can be. Now from a big ego to just a big guy, next up is Bubble Bass. Bubble Bass is best known for his debut role in season one's Pickles, as an obnoxious customer who tricks SpongeBob into thinking he forgot the pickles on his burger to scam the restaurant out of free food. News. <laughs> He's returned in recent seasons, but not for any redemption. Oh, rapturous day! Day, my 
my collection will be completed! He's basically just comic book guy from The Simpsons now. He's mean, snarky, and constantly manipulates others into doing everything for him. Not a pleasant guy on any level, but also, why and how did he hide that woman's car keys under his tongue? Well, that question can wait for now. Next up is Grandma Plankton. Plankton's Grammy Ma is the only relative of the diabolical little guy who makes a lot of appearances throughout the series. Although, she does seem to get along well with Plankton most of the time. You are darling. Oh, Plankton, you always were my favorite granddaughter. She does share his ambitions to steal the secret formula and rule the world, or at least the Krusty Krab. But she's nowhere near as dirty as our next entry, the Dirty Bubble. One of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's arch nemeses. The Dirty Bubble is a simple bubble. He sees stuff that's clean, and he wants to make it dirty. As black and white as this sounds, he may be more broken than you would expect. He has tried to literally clean up his act by cleaning up his own body, which revealed that he may suffer from an addiction to dirt, which is the source of his evil nature. For weeks, SpongeBob worked with DB to stay clean and good. Hopefully one day he can figure out how to stay clean, but for now, he's just got to stay in the lower end of our list. But let's talk about the geriatric duo's other arch enemy, Man Ray. Evil. This would-be world dictator might seem like a sure shot for the lower half of this category, but let's take a look back at his debut episode in Season 2, when Spongebob and Patrick help train him to be less evil. He pretty much loses the urge to do bad thanks to the tickle belt therapy he goes through. <laughs> I guess I'll just open a checking account. And he's also quite friendly at times, but unfortunately, we still can't completely excuse him for enslaving the entirety of Bikini Bottom on at least one occasion, especially considering he still commits crimes from time to time, despite his earlier reform. Next up is everyone's favorite undersea computer, Karen Plankton. Karen is an interesting case. It's been stated that Plankton built her, but also that she has a mother-in-law. What's more, in the episode Goo Goo Gas, she was revealed to have been a calculator in childhood. But confusing origins aside, she's mostly just bad by association with Plankton. She doesn't mind supporting Plankton's schemes to steal the formula, and yet at the same time, she constantly berates him. I was just trying to make myself pretty for you, but do you even care? All you ever do is make stupid schemes about stupid sandwiches. Granted, Plankton mistreats Karen a lot, but there have been times, like in the episode Fun, where Karen actively puts Plankton on the right path to make his plans work out. This is the perfect opportunity for revenge. She may not be pure evil, but Karen's definitely earned a spot in the bad territory. But now it's time to take a trip to Atlantic City to talk about King Poseidon. He's the main villain of the third SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run, and he kidnaps Gary to use his snail slime as a skincare routine. He does this with countless snails, and once he's done with their slime, he pretty much enslaves them. He also tries to kill SpongeBob and company, and even though they make amends at the movie's end, I'm not sure that motive and resolution add up. Like, I don't know, man, maybe you just don't have friends because you're a murderous, egotistical animal abuser. Just a thought. Some people just need to have their butts kicked now and then. A sentiment that Flats the Flounder would certainly agree with. While he's not even close to a major character in the series, Flats is memorable for his role in The Bully. One of the funniest classic episodes of the show. Please turn and show the class what you drew, honey. <laughs> He likes kicking butts and taking names, and he's all out of names. His bullying doesn't just go for Spongebob, though. He's implied to abuse his own father as well. It seems like the nicer someone is to Flats, the more he wants to kick their butts. Maybe someone ought to kick this guy's butt into a therapist's office. But now we arrive at Davy Jones' locker to talk about the spooky ghost pirate who haunts the Seven Seas, the Flying Dutchman. From stealing souls to enslaving Bikini Bottomites to even terrorizing random citizens for fun, Dutchie is no joke. No! That's impossible! He could definitely be a lot worse given his power level, but the Dutchman still gets way too much pleasure out of terrorism to place him anywhere but the bad and evil section. The Flying Dutchman! <laughs> still, he can be reasonable, at times. Like when he turned Spongebob and Patrick from ghosts back to their normal selves in exchange for helping him prep for his date. That's just enough to put him above our next pirate captain, Burger Beard. To Bikini Bottom, this guy is an absolute menace. He manages to steal the formula for Krabby Patties and starts selling them on land. 
throwing the undersea world into chaos and making himself some sweet, sweet cash. Although you could potentially argue he didn't know his actions would affect other living creatures, he doesn't hesitate to fight them in order to keep his stolen treasure. And he's also really cruel to his seagulls. Not to mention, holy fish paste, those prices are ridiculous. How do you sleep at night, Burger Beard? Making his mark next is Doodle Bob. The moral questionability of SpongeBob creating this demon aside, Doodle Bob is no joke. He's willing to go to any lengths to usurp SpongeBob's life, even if that means literally erasing him from existence. He's extremely abusive to the other citizens of Bikini Bottom, even if they've done absolutely nothing to him. Pretty much the closest anyone on this list comes to a true chaotic evil character, Doodle Bob is an absolute menace in every sense of the word. Landing just outside of our bottom three is the series' main villain, Sheldon J. Plankton. Despite being only the fourth most evil character in our eyes, Plankton has the largest and probably the most horrific list of crimes of any character on the entire list. Theft isn't where it stops. He's also guilty of verbally abusing his wife, psychologically manipulating people, enslaving the entire population of Bikini Bottom, etc, etc. I finally stolen a Krabby Patty! That's nice! His drive for world domination is highly calculated too. In the episode King Plankton, he even practices for that faithful day he'll rule over the world by ruling over a bunch of sea monkeys in SpongeBob's aquarium. I rule you, I rule you, I rule you, I rule you. And the key to ruling the world is the Krabby Patty secret formula, which he'll stop at nothing to achieve. That drive to snatch Mr. Krabs' success for himself earns him the Envy Medal. What saves him from falling any lower is the fact that he is the last character on our list to have some redeeming quality. Plankton may be a tyrannical overlord in the making, but he does care about his wife and his pet amoeba, Spot, though much more for the latter. He's also able to work with SpongeBob on occasion when one of them needs his help, and even shows some concern for him every now and then. It's possible that despite his evil remaining as strong as ever, Plankton has become more of a friendly face over the years. He is still evil, for sure, but at least he's able to have some friends nowadays. <laughs> The winner of the bronze medal of evil is also perhaps the most hated character in SpongeBob history, Puffy Fluffy. This menace appears in the episode A Pal for Gary, which is already a crime on its own. But to make things even worse, he spends the whole episode threatening Gary's life. Poor Gary is fighting for his life against this creature, all while SpongeBob remains terribly oblivious. <sighs> I am gonna sleep so well knowing that Gary's got a good buddy to take care of him. While Puffy Fluffy's species is said to primarily exhibit their ferocious tendencies around other pets, he also doesn't hesitate to try and eat SpongeBob. And to make it worse, SpongeBob was trying to help Puffy himself. I don't know why he was, but he was. Honestly, good riddance to this scumbag. But we have to say, Dennis is much more of a monster than Puffy Fluffy, which is why he gets the silver medal of evil. This vicious, cold-blooded predator is hired by Plankton in the SpongeBob movie to assassinate SpongeBob and Plankton, but his behavior throughout the movie makes it pretty obvious that Dennis is in it for the sheer joy of hurting others. Even being crushed by Bigger Boot isn't enough to deter Dennis, as he returns later on to try and kill SpongeBob and Patrick atop David Hasselhoff's back. Not even five goober dollars was enough to pay this menace off. The fact that he killed multiple people unrelated to his mission and clearly took great joy in the prospect of killing SpongeBob and Patrick, not to mention his total lack of hesitation to work for a plankton, is enough to confirm that Dennis is the most heartless, cruel fish in the sea. With one exception. He didn't take the gold medal, but before we move on to Bikini Bottom's most evil character, we're definitely giving the Wrath Medal to Dennis. You can debate whether the most evil character in Bikini Bottom is Plankton, or Doodle Bob, or Dennis, or maybe even Mr. Krabs, but we here at Wicked Binge believe deep down, everyone can agree, the gold medal of evil has to go to the pizza customer. He's a monster. He's ruthless. He's cold and uncaring, showing no sympathy towards the weak and weary. He'll draw you in at first, sure, thanking you for that pizza you went through literal natural disasters to deliver. But at the end of it all, he'll use three words to crush your soul. Where's my drink? 
A drink that he did not order, mind you. This man went out of his way to scream at SpongeBob over forgetting a drink he literally didn't order, and threw the pizza directly into his face. His total lack of remorse for making a happy, well-meaning, friendly delivery person break down in tears was enough to move Squidward. And this is season one Squidward, mind you. So he was still a total jerk. So we say the gold medal of evil is on the house.